Hi, my name is Bethany Stahl. I'm a full-time author and illustrator, and you are watching my InDesign tutorial series. Woo! So in today's video, we have already set up our documents, so page size and pleads, and now we are on to more fun stuff. So today, we are going to be learning how to place text, some of the different things we can do with text, and all that fun texty stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be putting on my gunners. These are gaming glasses or blue light glasses. So I really like gunners. Um, you can get them even darker than this, which I will be doing next time I upgrade my gunners. And uh, basically they save your eyeballs some strain. I'm not sponsored by this, just as somebody who works on the computer all day, every day. These have definitely saved my eyeballs. I will put a link in the description if you're interested. Okay, so let's talk about text. So first things first, over here we have our little panel of tools. So this little black arrow is our selection tool. This is gonna be the one we always wanna use. Avoid this little white arrow. Um, that one is complicated, so let's stick to the black arrow. Aside from here, uh, we'll slowly learn these tools over time, but this big T is going to be our text tool or a type tool, so we will be using that. If you do not see this, go ahead and go over to Window and make sure this Tools box is checked, because if not, you won't see it. So go ahead and get those tools up there. The next thing we want to learn how to use is our Zoom In tool and our zoom out. So this is going to be control plus to zoom in and control minus to zoom out. Yay. <laughs> All right, so now that we are in here, what we can do is we can start formatting. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. Um, over here, you should have your pages up. I really like this view for my books. So that is going to be over here in Window and Pages. If you see this little toolbox over here, just click on that little page icon here and you will have this be brought up. So over here, you can click on some pages to direct you to them quicker. But for here, I'm just gonna start with pages two and three. So I'm going to go to my Type tool and just click on that and then click on this box. So you notice if I just click, nothing happens. You have to click and drag and give yourself a little text box. So here I will say, this is my book. Do not steal it. Thanks. Okay. So this is my copyright page text. Obviously this is not the real copyright page. If you do want to see more information about my copyright page, go over to patreon.com where I give you the copy paste text of my copyright page. Um, other than that, go watch my front matter video where I talk about all the things you want to put in the front of your book. So here I can highlight my text with control A but I'm not getting any options to edit it. So what we are going to do is go over here to properties and we will see, wow, all these cool things. So again, if you're not seeing this, you wanna to go to window and properties to bring this guy up. Or over here, if you see these little sliders, this is gonna be where properties are. Now, if you're not seeing the right properties here, just click on the text box and it will bring it up. From here, I can do control A. I can change my text to anything I want. So let's let's go ahead and find some fun. I'll do this one. If you wanna see my favorite places for finding new fun font, go over to Patreon where I share all those resources. Essentially, I, I feel bad saying so much in these videos to go over to Patreon, go over to Patreon, but honestly, over there is where I put everything. It's a huge collective of information. So if you have a question, it's likely answered on that page. So it is a good resource, especially when it comes to this backend stuff. So after you choose your font, we can look here if the fonts have other options. So let's just go ahead and choose a basic font. 
So um, you can change it here, regular italic bold. So I do recommend you choose a text that does let you have these other things. Um, if you are doing a children's book to where you want italics or anything of that sort, check that out first with your text options because there are some fonts that don't have anything fancy with them. So I have formatted full books and a font that I loved only to realize they don't have italics and I need italics. So definitely check that out first before you format your whole book. So if I have font that I want to keep going on to the next page, but I don't want to just keep copy and pasting page for page, what you can do is this is my book with all my information and this text goes on and on and on and on. So what you see here when we grab the black arrow tool is this little red plus. If we click this and click somewhere else, so if I want this text to continue over here, I can see that what I was typing is now over here. But if I make this bigger, it will come back over here. So basically it's a running text box that will let things go on. I don't recommend this for children's books, but I do recommend this for novels. And if you are interested in formatting novels, that will be coming in the very near future with how I'm formatting my YA novel in InDesign. So for children's books, I do recommend just a basic little text box here. Okay, so now that we've looked at our fonts, we can go over here and I can make this bigger. I can make this smaller. Um, this is really cool right here. This is your letting. So what this will do is separate your text. So you can have it to where each line is separated. Okay, so that's not all one size, so let's just make that all one size. But this is really good, especially for children's books. Some fonts may look really close together. So here you have the ability to stretch them out a bit. And then this little VA that has the arrows to each side, what that does is put space in between your letters. So you can stretch it out this way. And sometimes it's easier to read. I do find that a lot of really cute fonts often are really cramped together. So I like to give them a little bit of space. This is also really good if you are putting your author name somewhere. Um, I think it looks a lot more professional instead of having your name like this, sort of giving that very regal space. So having it a little bit more spaced out, um, that could be really cool and an option for you to do. So that is basically the basics of this little grouping. Now, if we go down here, we have our justification settings. So centered, align right, all of these fun sorts of things for children's books. I do recommend that you either justify it on the left or you do ragged right. Um, either way will work. I, I think it's a little bit cleaner if you have it justified, but choose what looks best for your books. There are certain books that I think look better with Ragged Right. I think there's other books that look better justified. So definitely play. Uh, in some books, if you have so little few words, you can kind of pop your words around and that doesn't really matter. So play with your settings and see what looks best. Here, we can make rules for our text. So typically the only one I will use here is this first line indent. So I will maybe put that in like a quarter of an inch. So if your text is all together and you have paragraphs, uh, that will basically, as you can see, it makes a little paragraph right there 
for you. So every time you click enter, it will start you in. Again, this is very much uh, a good tool for novels. Children's books, you may not have those indentations. Some of my books don't have in indentations if they're just little snippets of text. But other books, if you do have at least a decent paragraph going, I'd recommend that little first indentation, which you can set right here. Ooh. Okay. And then the only other thing that I would recommend you do over here is uncheck hyphenate. For children's books, hyphenated words are going to be a little bit confusing. And since you should probably be using a lower vocabulary, some words shouldn't be hyphenated at all. So I would recommend checking off hyphenate for your children's book. But if you're working on novels, definitely use hyphenate. So that will make the text balance a little better and you may have to play with your text box size to avoid the hyphenations, but you definitely really don't want those in children's books. Now, one more thing that's really cool to do with text, and you will see this in a lot of modern day children's books, is a fun text that doesn't stick to any rules. It just sort of bends and flows all over the page and makes all these silly little shapes. And that can be done just like this. So over here, we are going to go grab our pen tool. And let's say that we are going to make a little mountain in our text. So when you click and you hold down your left clicker mouse, um, you can drag out these little handles and this is going to help your line curve. So we are just going to pull that and you see as I pull this out and hold, that little line changes. So let's get a nice pretty curve in here. So we'll just like highlight like we're going up a mountain. This is what we want our text to look like. So now what I can do is go over to my type tool, click on it to hold it and click type on a path. And I can click right here and I can start saying the bunnies climbed over the hill and went to see what was on the other side. They hopped and popped all the way there. Okay, <laughs> all the way. <laughs> So as you can see, now I have this text that goes all kinds of crazy. This can be so much fun to use. Obviously use it in moderation and try to make it really, really classy. But here I can highlight it. I can change the size. I can change the spacing. So you can do whatever you want with this. It's really fun. That pen tool is a lot of fun to make more sorts of crazy text. Now, if you are looking for text that is sort of warped and crazy, what you may have to do is go over to Illustrator, make some text and import that over. If you're interested in that, stay tuned because that will be in a different tutorial. Now, one last thing about text here is how we can make it sort of go around an image. So if you have a spot illustration in the center, but you want text to go all around it, we are going to show you how. So let's drag this text box out and I am just going to fill this up with lots and lots and lots of text, oops. So we can see how we can move around an object. So I'm going to go over to the shape tool. I'm just going to grab a circle and pretend like this is my illustration. So let's go back to that arrow tool. So let's pretend like I have an illustration here, but I want this text to fit around this little illustration. Let's show you how to do that right now. So we are going to go up here in window, go to text wrap. And here we can see that we have some options. So let's go ahead and do wrap around the text. Whoa, so now you can see that it is wrapped around this circle. And you can see if I move this circle around, it is perfectly wrapping around that text. What I can also do is some of these texts are really close to our circle. So if I pop this, 
and makes a nice little radius around our circle that we can see. So this is really exciting for children's books and a fun way to lay out your text because you can have this cute little spot illustration with all this fun text sort of around it. So that is where we're going to end our text video. Remember to come back for more InDesign tutorials. So that's just the basic of how we can use our text boxes to our advantage. And next time we are going to work on illustrations and importing those in a few ways we can do that. And then we will keep moving on in this InDesign tutorial series. Make sure if you haven't already, you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell icon so you can see every time I upload. And don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment below your favorite thing about text. Is it wrapping your text? Is it making it on the path? Um, I think my favorite thing about text is just probably choosing font. Honestly, I am a font junkie. I absolutely love it and I can spend entire days searching font websites and downloading them and playing with them. So I think that's my favorite, but comment and let me know what your favorite is. If you're looking for more behind the scenes tutorials, documents, and more, head over to patreon.com slash bethanystahl. And if you want to learn more about publishing, visit bethanystahl.com slash classes, where I have a ton of free content over there that you can peruse. And that is also the directory for my Patreons to direct them back to Patreon with any other information. So if there's something over there that you may want to figure out, it will direct you to that exact Patreon article. So I hope this helped and I will see you all in the next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. See you next time. Woo -hoo -hoo. Happy publishing. Publishing is the best. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs>